Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to post produce for shots that were shot under very harsh sunlight uh, that have really hard shadows, as you see in this picture right here. Uh, and we're going to switch things up a little bit. We're going to be using Photoshop ACR for this Adobe Camera Raw rather than Lightroom. So, but just know that you can use Lightroom as well. Uh, you can follow along the sliders and everything. It's going to be slightly different places, but it's the exact same thing. So, use ACR, use Lightroom, whatever you guys prefer. So, let's switch to full screen mode first by hitting F and then I'm going to hold Alt and zoom into our image. And basically the problem that you see here with this image is basically just that uh, you know we have a super hard highlight on the right side of his face and then we have this harsh dark shadow on the left side and, and his eye sockets. So what we need to do is basically balance it out. Uh, now the first thing I want to do is we're going to reduce our exposure by negative one. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to reduce exposure by negative one. We're going to go to brightness and raise it to 100, which is basically an equal uh, reversal in exposure. But what happens is, like we talked about before, exposure affects highlights more than it does midtones. So doing that reversal right there is actually going to uh, pull back a little bit of those midtones while retaining, while kind of bringing the highlights down slightly. And we can see that by hitting P. It's a very subtle difference. But I'm going to hit P. You can see this is the before and this is the after. So we can already see a slight improvement in the, that midtone and shadow area and uh, over that previous version. So next thing we do is we're going to pump up our recovery. We're going to go all the way up. And as long as I don't see any unnatural gradation, I'm going to take it all the way to 100. This is going to pull all those highlights down. And then after that, we're going to take our fill light. We're going to drag fill light up. We'll go up to, say, plus. Plus 30 is about good. We're going to make some basic adjustments here, and then we'll make some additional modifications with our tone curve, just to kind of finalize all those you know, finishing touches. I do want to brighten up a little bit more, just so these midtones are up a little bit higher. Let's pull up brightness just a tiny bit. It's okay if my highlight on the right side is a little bit bright, because it is, after all, a highlight. So I want it to still be a highlight. I'm going to help in reducing some of this kind of harsh edge on the shadow by reducing contrast just a bit. We'll go down to 10, and I'm going to increase my blacks just so it doesn't look, so my shadows don't look completely devoid of any dark uh, blacks. Let's go up to plus 8. All right, let's add a little bit of mid-tone contrast by boosting clarity a bit, and then we'll add a little bit of vibrance. And we're going to come back to our temperature in just a minute. Um, with such a, a bump in that fill light, we're going to need to kind of get the tones right, because it, fill light does have an effect over those tones. But let's first tweak our tone curve. So I'm going to switch to the tone curve panel. And what I want to do is I'm in the point tone curve so we can kind of adjust these points individually um, and add new points if we need to, but we're just going to adjust these points that are already set. And so what I'm trying to do is just bring out a little bit more of this shadow, and so I'm going to pull up on the shadows just a bit. I'm going to bring these uh, kind of midpoint in the shadow area up a little bit. Let's see, and bring the sh shadows up a little bit more. We're going to affect the midtones as well, bring up the midtones a tiny bit. And then I might pull down, let's see if we can pull down the highlights just a tiny, tiny bit. If we make two major of, uh, modifications in this tone curve, we're going to have some unnatural gradation in these colors. So I don't want it to look fake at all. So I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. I'm just slightly bumping that tone curve just to make a little minor modification. So if we look at the before, this is what it was before, this is what it was after. Our highlights pretty much stayed the same, but we pulled out a little bit more of those midtones and shadows. So now let's switch back to our basic panel. We're going to tweak our temperature right now. I'm going to increase the temperature a little bit, as well as pull the tint down just a tiny bit. I think he's a little bit on the red side on my screen right now. We're going to go to about 5600, and actually we'll go to 5500. And that looks good. The one thing I want to do is I want to add a little more blacks, but I don't want his eyes to dis disappear completely. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of blacks, but let's make a little bit of a modification on his eyes. I'm going to hit K to pick up my adjustment brush, and I'm going to zoom in on his face. Actually, let's, let's go back to our zoom tool. Let's zoom in on his face completely so we can just see his eyes. And now let's hit K to get our adjustment brush. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, a little adjustment brush that's going to brighten up the eye sockets um, and really just the eyes. Whoops, sorry, I moved my screen a little bit. Okay, so let's go to exposure. We're going to bump it up to say about 0.5 and then we're going to bring our brightness up to, actually not brightness, sorry, we're going to bring our contrast up. Uh, bring our contrast up to, let's say, plus 15. And that's about right. What I want to do is increase the size just a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit too much. 
So let's go down. We can also use the left and right brackets to increase size as well. Um, and then my feather, I want it to be not too strong because I don't want it to go too much over. We'll do a little bit of cleanup, but I don't want to be doing too much cleanup. So we're going to just drag it over the eye. It's okay if we cover a little bit of that, uh, the actual eyelids. Um, I just don't want to get too much of the brightened area around the sockets. So let's go right there. We'll make a modification by just pulling up a little bit, just so that this the eye brightness kind of matches the skin tones right here. And what I'm going to do is hold minus, uh, hold alt, so that we get the uh, minusing brush, and we're going to subtract this out. And let's uh, reduce our feather again. I'm just going to subtract it out of this area so that we don't have it covering over the eyelids or over that skin that's already kind of bright. So we're just subtracting out, making a little bit of a tweak on this mask. And that's good about right there. All right, we're good with this brush. Uh, let's click on our adjustment brush to go back to the basic panel. And I'm going to hold Alt and scroll out with my mouse wheel just to see and make sure that this looks right. And it looks actually pretty good right there. I can increase a little bit of contrast if I want just to give it a little more pop. And then we're good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the preset panel and I'm going to hit P so you can see our before and our after. So here's the before and here is the after of our same image. So you can see how with just a little bit of tweaking uh, the basic sliders as well as some tone curve and a little bit of adjustment brush we can really bring out all the shadows in an image that was shot in very harsh sunlight. Alright guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Take it easy.